there's something trustworthy about a town with a river flowing through it. After all, what is a river if not an artery? Without an artery, you can't have blood. And without blood, you can't have a heart. River towns invariably have heart, and if you pay attention, the river is where you go to check the pulse. Local fishing guide and legendary character, Dan Laren, was born in Livingston and has been witness to the town's many changing fortunes. I had a paper route, and on the days that I would go and collect money, I would ride my Schwinn Stingray out here and listen to the jute box and, and drink a Coke with the girls before the shift change at the railroad or before the bankers and lawyers showed up. <laughs> In 1882, Livingston became a town and due to its location, became a crucial hub of the Northern Pacific Railroad's Rocky Mountain operations. During peak years, 3,000 people were employed working three shifts, disassembling and repairing locomotives in the town's classic red brick workshops. For almost a century, things were good. But in the 1980s, the railroad packed up shop and moved their operations. Almost overnight, the town lost its main reason for being. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of people left. You know, there, there really wasn't any work. Uh, fortunately, I was working at Dan Bailey's. You know, I had a steady job. I was one of the fortunate few. A lot of people had to move away. Slowly, Livingston managed to recover in large part due to its proximity to the world's first national park. Despite the changes, some things remain the same. The trains still blast their horns at the 5th Street crossing, and the Yellowstone is still the longest undammed river in the lower 48. This particular town stretch routinely boasts the highest fish count on the whole river, a situation that keeps both the townies and the tourists happy. Ever since Norman McLean's novel, A River Runs Through It, Missoula has been the literary soul of Montana. These days, the town probably has more writers per capita than just about anywhere outside of Brooklyn. If there's one activity that links fishing and writing, it might just be drinking. Poet, essayist, and fishing guide, Chris Dabrowski knows water and watering holes of the Missoula area as well as anyone. You know, the other thing about this river, this particular river, the Clark Fork, is that it's not, it resists any penchant for the pastoral. It, it refuses to be glorified in just in terms of its sheer beauty. It's, it's got an edge to it, like Missoula does. So any attempt to say like, oh, this is just sheer beauty and, and pristine whatever, um, are, are gonna be resisted by this particular body of water here, you know. Missoula is a town in which rivers converge. Like the rivers themselves, people come together here and bring with them their stories. One of the earliest creative writing programs in the country was started here at the University of Montana. And to this day, the chances of sitting on a bar stool next to a novelist or a poet are higher than just about anywhere else in the country. I think Missoula is also a community that, that values art and writers, but doesn't allow writers to take themselves too seriously. You know, um, that's what I've always loved about it. When the beans are counted at the end of, at the end of this whole deal, um, our lives are what we have done. And people take that, um, that truth pretty seriously around here. Um, and it's, like I said, it's an encouraging and inspiring and a, and a kind of humbled, humbling dynamic to see that at work. When it comes down to it, 
What fun is catching a fish if you can't tell someone about it later? Telling a proper fish story is as important of a part of the fishing experience as rowing the boat. A fact that will ensure fishermen and storytellers of all kinds will continue to find their way to the trout streams and booze joints of Missoula, Montana. The town's stretch will never be glamorous. It's the piece of water you hit before or after work, maybe even on your lunch break. You might occasionally have great fishing, but that's almost beside the point. In some ways, when you go fishing in town, you're having a conversation with the town itself, learning a few of its quirks and intricacies, gaining a better understanding of its culture. So much fly fishing media these days is concerned with travel, going further, chasing solitude in pursuit of increasingly more exotic fish and settings. Of course, we love the adventurous aspect of fly fishing as much as anyone. However, in uncertain times, there's something of great value to be found in the nearby, the familiar, the easy, an evening on the water with friends, a 12-inch rainbow trout or two, and after, a drink at your favorite local bar. So cheers to the town stretch. Enjoy yours wherever it may be.